and hello and welcome to Alex Kadex Creative Sandbox making WWE Superstars art. My name is Alex and yes, we continuing with uh, this thing which is again making WWE Superstars art. Uh, it's going to be weird because unfortunately I forgot to change a couple of things. So the first thing that I just noticed is this thing in the bottom. So like the fact that we are actually sculpting and the fact that we are actually working with the CM Punk sculpt. It's not necessarily the case, we're actually going to start integrate painting from the stream. Um, I want to quickly talk about like the reason why I took a week off from uh, these type of streams. One of the main reasons why it took, um, like, just check the sound and I will continue. Week off from beep, sound works. So one of the reasons why I took um, a week off was uh, I actually didn't want to 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 do this because I actually was prepared to talk about WWE. I managed to watch everything throughout the previous week, but since I want to make this create uh, this stream uh, these streams creative like more creative oriented and art oriented I decided okay I could just basically make a stream and talk about WWE and that's it and not do anything because I actually didn't prepare anything when it comes down to creative and when it comes down to creative I actually stumbled upon a pretty big change that basically resulted in uh, launching the painting part of the uh, making WWE Superstars art. So um, before that, when I started making WWE Superstars art streams, I kind of thought that I'm going to work only with sculpting uh, for now, and I'm going to basically go from the beginning of the sculpting, then we will try to add some type of expression to the sculpting, and in the end we're just going to basically finish it. In. Finish it in the actual sculpt way, but I, I, I didn't necessarily knew how exactly it is going to be, so um, I didn't knew uh, like, what is the final product for this? Yeah, we're going to use this one in a bit. My intellectual maps. So, today is going to be more creative-oriented stream. We're going to talk about WWE uh, briefly, uh, because there's nothing actually, like, crazy happened throughout the week, truly. I mean, the only thing that, like, happened throughout the week is, like, the build-up towards a uh, Super Showdown. Um, yep. Oh, come on, man. Move. Move. Yeah, good. So, let me move. Uh, yeah, it's it's loading, so it might lag a bit. So, wait a minute, I need to open WWE Thing 2 in order to cover things quicker. Actually, right now I'm going to open a lot of intellectual maps, like my maps, and because of that it actually might lag a bit. Hopefully it's not going to be the case. Uh, so, I'm not going to work in ZBrush today, so again, today is, is a sculpting, uh, not a sculpting day, but actually kind of a painting day of some sort. Um, and I, I want to briefly to talk about uh, how uh, I decided to basically revamp the streams a little bit, because again, right now I'm just like figuring out how is how, how exactly these streams will go. So one thing that I, will fig uh, that I figured out already is that at the beginning of the stream, Stream, I'm going to quickly talk about what we're going to cover in in the stream or I'm going to um, talk about something important that involves streams in most cases kind of big news uh, how things are going to change how we're going to approach things from now on which is exactly what I'm going to do right now after this we're going to talk about of course WWE um, quickly cover the week uh, and after that, we're the rest of, till the end of the session. We're going to f finally work with creative stuff, and we're actually going to work with it live, not the way that I showed it before. But when I just sculpted things outside of the stream and put those things in here, so we're actually going to kind of create things live, which is the whole point of streaming. Um, so, um, so the reason why I decided to change uh, the things with the stream is because of this. So. I worked on a portrait pipeline example with integrated studying on my Twitch, uh, on Creative Sandbox that's on Twitch, and while doing so, I kind of answered the question what I need to do with the sculpting part of uh, Creative Sandbox, and 
this is the painting part of Creative Sandbox when we are actually going from the idea stage, going into the composition stage, then we're going into the lighting stage, then we're going into the final sketch stage, and the last stage of course is going to be a rendering. Uh, so again, if you want to know about those stages in more uh, depth, go check out uh, streams from Creative Seven Box that are already on YouTube. I talked about them like not briefly, but actually super inex extensively. So I'm not going to cover those um, in here. Instead, I'm just going to talk uh, like what exact changes um, forced me to cancel last week's streams and start painting streams from this week. So um, I, asked myself, I asked myself a question like in what format I want to represent my sculpting. Um, so again, just to quickly show you our previous result in sculpting. I want to launch the video with this. Again, today's stream is going to be super chill. I'm not going to try to cover everything. Uh, screw that. Um, it's just going to make me nervous and super hectic, don't want to do that. Um, probably this. Yep. So, in the last stream, we basically covered this. Um, we tried to... Um, the, the last stream was, of course, uh, focused more on sculpting. Uh, we talked about WWE, of course, um, then we uh, launched a re-sculpt from a regular anatomical face and tried to basically shape it closer like, like to something that looks closer to the CM Punk. But once I get to the stage, I kind of stopped and rethought... I needed, I needed a little bit of rethinking where it could go next, because again, I could approach it into a final detail sculpting, but if I will do that, my work is going to be in the end, like, supposed to be represented in sculpting then. Um, but I should ask myself a question, like, do I actually need to represent work in sculpting? Like, actually spend, like, crazy amount of time to sculpt it till the end, um, in order to just present this unpainted version of the final sculpt, once we will get to the final stage. And the answer was not. I actually wanted to. I want to. I want to present all my work in painting. Even if I'm sculpting something, I want to use sculpting um, to basically learn painting better. And because of this, I kind of decided. Okay, so since now the last stage of the sculpting right now is to actually implement a facial features and I don't know the story behind CM Punk, like, I actually didn't create any idea, like, any, I didn't integrate any idea in this portrait. Because again, for me, the main thing uh, while, working, while, while working with portraits, and this is the main reason why I actually uh, came up with this uh, portrait pipeline and spent a great deal of time on it, is to actually find a way to add meaning into the portrait. Not just basically create a portrait, like, paint from the photo or whatever, or just study person that we're studying, but actually use this information to uh, create meaningful portrait with the psychological message, with the, something that basically will attract viewer, not just by the, with the subject, but with the meaning, with the, mm, with the body language, with the expression and whatever. And I basically come up, uh, came up with this uh, portrait pipeline example with, with integrated studying, and this, uh, what we did throughout a couple of weeks of sculpting, um, or throughout the month almost of sculpting, uh, was exactly the element of integrated studying. But the difference is, in painting, we're integrating this studying through the painting process, or for the drawing. Uh, we're working on skull separately, then we're adding nose, ears, neck, and uh, eyes, then we're adding muscles, then we're adding anatomy form to it, which is again, in, in drawing you need to go through separate passes, and with sculpting you just need, you can start to work with it right away without any kind of problem, so it's actually not that big of a deal. Um, so, and then the next part is to implement expression, so analyze expression first, like what expression you need based on this information that you gather from the first idea stage, and only then add this expression into the actual uh, kind of sculpt. Um, and basically I figured out that, okay, so it means that 
I basically skipped all important stages of painting and actually creating work and making art. Uh, I skipped the idea stage, I skipped the stage of composition, I, stay, I skipped stage of lighting, I, and I went right away into the reference search, I find proper reference for CM Punk, I found um, a front and side view, then I created a skull um, based on this reference, uh, I cre I, uh, then I added muscles, which was exactly what we did before, let me show you. So, these two, uh, this is like process that I'm going to go through in painting and in sculpting. So first we are uh, basically finding references for CM Punk in this particular instance, yes, we're then uh, under painting or painting over this reference and trying to reverse engineer his skull uh, based on his face, the same way, uh, then we're doing the same for uh, um, his uh, anatomy um, on top of the skull and trying to connect them together, um, of course using references. So. And this same, then we're going into the sculpting, adding the form through the sculpting, because again, the difference from painting part, because in painting part, we we did this in 2D, by just creating an illusion of reality, uh, when uh, in sculpting, of course, this stage of anatomy form was, did, was made in 3D. So this is exactly what we did uh, throughout, like, last six sessions is basically we studied CM Punk but then I figured out okay what's next I need to f find a way to give him some type of a character now and now turn this studying part into actually turning it into some type of work like final work and then I basically figured out okay um, I'm not ready to do that because I need to come up with the story for CM Punk, I need to actually analyze his, him as a character, I need to come up with some type of idea, explanation and whatever. So, and because of this I basically, uh, like, that was a couple of hours before starting the stream and I kind of thought to myself, okay, I'm not going to manage to cover everything, neither prepare anything, and because of this I decided to cancel streams last week and decided that we're going to start with painting part, and from now on, Every pro project that we're going to attack, the next one is going to be AJ. We're going to basically uh, create an AJ portrait. Uh, starting from the next project, once we will start to, with AJ, we actually going to start with from here, not from sculpting. Uh, we actually going to start from here, from where we're going to start today. So we're going to work on um, analyzing the character, we're going to work on gathering the proper information and explaining the character traits and whatever. So we actually going to create a story behind the character, which is actually going to be an awesome thing and interesting thing because uh, with WWE it's much, much, much harder. This example was made on the Emily portrait from 2001 Emily, the movie, a French movie. Uh, um, this example was did on this and it actually was relatively easy because movie already has a some type of storyline with WWE we, we we're not necessarily having a like a complete like cr crazy awesome characters in terms of like their background and etc they're kind of mm, we, sh we usually characters in WWE they are passing through so they're existing certain amount of time but then they're completely changing and they're evolving into something completely different if they if they don't have a particular gimmick. Um, so it, it's it's going to be much harder to come up with the story. And again, and again, we're going to talk about it in a bit. So basically, that's it. In this session, and starting from this session and from now on until we will get to the back to the sculpting, we're not going to go in here into the sculpting un until we're going to cover the first stage, second stage, third stage. And only on fourth stage, starting from here, from analyzing expression and putting this expression on the, on an actual sculpt, uh, because we're in finished anatomy form. Um, so again, we finished this part already with sculpting, and now we need to implement it to this into the sculpting a uh, uh, existing expression that we wanna realize CM Punk with. Uh, but again, since I don't have yet a clear view what exactly CM Punk needs to look like in this portrait in terms of the character uh, because character actually like CM Punk's character throughout the years like she actually turned into a different type of things 
he was a kind of a heel, he was a face, he was a... Again, he was a lot of things uh, throughout the years. And because of this, it's going to be a hard one to do. I already tried to do this a bit, so I tried to explain the idea behind the... Uh, uh, the inspiration behind the idea, so basically I decided to take a straight-edge society as the thing. And again, we're going to talk about this in a little bit a little bit more depth once we will cover WWE thing. So yeah, let's just um, before doing this again cover WWE thing. Uh, the last two weeks, um, since there was already two weeks past, I'm probably not going to cover everything 100% right. Uh, so we will start with Raw. Um, I don't believe the titles are changed. Nope, titles are not changed. Uh, there are a couple of changes right now. Actually. In terms of the changes, nothing changes right now in WWE because everything kind of uh, heading towards a Super Showdown, which is going to be uh, next uh, this Sunday. Yep. So this Sunday is going to be Super Showdown, September fifth. Today, a Octo oh, October six. Uh, today is um, October third. So again. Um, Saturday? Oh, it's going to be on Saturday, not on Sunday. Okay, this is actually pretty cool. Uh, so that means that we're going to be able to watch it earlier. Cool, 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 cool. So, awesome. So again, I'm not going to talk about the matches that are going to be on Super Showdown. Uh, we will cover them a bit. Uh, I don't want to focus that much on WWE today because we have a need... We need... To we need to cover a lot, a lot of things when it comes down to the idea stage in CM Punk. It's completely new stuff, and we need to work on it. Um, so, uh, what we need? Um, I'm going to talk about predictions tomorrow about Super Showdown predictions. I'm not going to cover them today. So let's just go back and cover quickly WWE. So let's just take. You know, I, I would. I will try to find my notes and actually try to find things to talk about. Again, we're going to cover two weeks of NXT and two weeks of um, Mixed Act Challenge and Mae Young Classic next uh, tomorrow, because again, uh, today we're going to cover only two weeks of Raw and two weeks of SmackDown, uh, and maybe we'll talk about Mixed Act Challenge too. Yeah, we're going to talk about Mixed Act Challenge quickly. And, uh, of course, tomorrow we're going to cover NXT, May Young Classic, and 205 Live uh, throughout these two weeks. Um, so, so we will start with Raw. So, the first thing uh, last week that kind of changed uh, pretty cra in pretty crazy way, and it was weird that now, as you notice, WWE has a new preview. Uh, so, I mean, th the beginning uh, of... Each show basically starts with a new, a kind of super fancy preview with a different music, with a different visuals, and it's kind of weird for now. You need to adjust to it. It seems weird. Music is kind of fine, but it's not necessarily gives you this chill that oh, you're about to see WWE, and it's not the same. Maybe you need to adjust to it. I don't know. For now, it's weird. So this was the first change. The second change that WWE implemented. Uh, I need to change the. Yep, the second change that. Um, what? I actually not going to remember all things that went throughout the last week, because again, it was a week ago. I probably should talk about it a week ago. <laughs> You're not going to like remember everything that happened a week ago. In most cases, it was just not important. The only cool thing that I remember from there is the Gable fought with Victor, uh, or with, with Connor, and Connor won. Uh, this is probably his first win since debut, and the second week Connor fought against Bobby Roode, and he won too, and it was pretty sick. I mean, um, I believe he won against, against Bobby Roode, if I remember properly, though. Yeah, we'll cover that later. Um, so, what else? Um, Yep, Kevin Owens' show was pretty awesome uh, last week. Uh, I remember if it was like Owens' show, it was probably there. Uh, Nia Jax faced Alicia Fox. Um, one Shield faced Cor Corbin and ALP, probably in main event. Now well, that was pretty cool. Uh, Triple H uh, again. Um, uh, 
I'm not going to remember everything from last week. I'm, I'm going to skip last week. I might remember something, but let's just talk about this week, because come on. Uh, last week was last week. I'm not going to remember everything from last week. <laughs> I forget about most of it. Um, so, so the first thing uh, that happened on this Raw uh, was Dean Ambrose um, fought... Oh yeah. By the way, it's um, the frustration of Dean Ambrose. Like I already talked about that, the about the fact that Dean, Dean Ambrose might actually kind of turn heel and go against Seth Rollins. Uh, they're actually building it in a different direction. They're building it into a direction that Dean Ambrose might um, betray Shield, uh, the the whole group, not necessarily the Brotherhood, not necessarily the Seth Rollins himself. But I actually believe that he will definitely has to betray Seth Rollins only, not to betray the shield. And it, like everyone right now anticipates that he needs to uh, turn on the shield, but I'm anticipating that he's not going to turn on the shield itself, he's going to turn on Seth Rollins only. So it's going to be more personal than just like betraying his brother, brothers. Uh, because, I don't know, and he kind of uh, went through a lot of suggestions uh, in the, the this Raw. He talks about the fact that, yes, uh, I don't have titles, I could go against Seth Rollins and win the title, I could go against Roman Reigns and win the title, Baron Corbin, give him a choice at the beginning of the show that you might face Seth Rollins for the title, you might face uh, Roman Reigns for the title, or you might face um, um, Strowman for the title. Uh, and of course, Dean Ambrose uh, chose to face neither of those and wanted to face Corbin. Uh, but instead, uh, he fought probably against Strowman. Yep. And there was no winner because it was DQ. Um, yep, it was disqualification. Um, Then later, Reigns wanted to face Ziggler and wanted to put title on line, but Baron Corbin um, prohibited, pro prohibited him from doing this. He basically said that until um, Saudi Arabia, you're not going to be able to put your title on line, and that's it, which kind of weird. But still, uh, we get why it's done. So from now on, Reigns can defend the title until Saudi Arabia. Um, yep, Ronda Rousey faced Robbie Wright, nothing to say about that, it was pretty cool. Um, uh, so um, then uh, again, Bobby Roode fought Connor, and Connor won again, second win in a row, that was pretty interesting. So th this is actually a pretty interesting feud, I I'm happy for the Ascension, because again, since they started um, WWE Journey from NXT, um, after NXT they didn't, they didn't get pushed enough. Uh, they didn't get, didn't got any chances, and now finally they're doing something uh, decent. They kind of got a chance with Fandango, and they played a comedy act, which was awesome, but still, that was, I don't know. I wanted for them to be something so serious. Um, okay, Moments of Bliss got back. Uh, she covered uh, how she met Trish somewhere a long time ago, and Trish basically kind of abused her, whatever, in a... Not bullied her, not necessarily abused her, yeah, bullied her, uh, and it was pretty bad, I mean, um, yeah, it was pretty cool overall, uh, how Bliss covered this, again, Alexa Bliss is awesome, um, B-Team versus uh, Revival and B-Team 1, that was weird, I don't know why they're doing this, uh, I wanted uh, for Revival to get back, because I was afraid that they might uh, got fired because might get fired because of the fact that they're constantly getting injured. I don't know like to what extent there was an injury, but last week they are actually got back, um, and this week they're fought uh, and they lost. So I don't know what's happening with their revival. Maybe they're just going to feud with the B team. Um, although I'm not seeing this feud uh, that much, unless they they will come up with the de decent story there. Um, Yep, in most cases, uh, the whole show uh, was built around psychology against Dean Ambrose and Ziggler. Uh, I mean, the fact that Ziggler lost the match against Rollins, uh, or against Reigns at the beginning, and um, kind of Braun Strowman started to see a 
Ziggler as a weak link that might cost them a win on the Super Showdown and because of this there was kind of a little bit of psychology because of this Ziggler later got involved into the match with Rollins and McIntyre and because of this interference McIntyre won um, so again uh, they tried to push psychology on Dean Ambrose and tried to make him basically betray shield and basically weaken him before the uh, final face off of these two teams uh, it was unsuccessful eventually um, also Elias and KO snap uh, they tried to kind of pumped up uh, a feud against Cena and Lashley that is going to be on a super showdown um, and they mentioned uh, they were in the Boston at that time uh, and they mentioned OKC and uh, Supersonics uh, I believe Supersonics Yep, Seattle Supersonics. Uh, they was in Se they they were in Seattle, and oh snap, people were crazy. Uh, that was awesome atmosphere. That was awesome energy. This is the type of energy that I like when happens during the shows. This is something that you never going to find on the pay per views. This is one of the reasons why I love the actual shows because this element of like the, the type of reaction that you can see on the regular shows is always better than you could see the reaction on the actual pay-per-views I don't know why maybe because it's much more personal on the pay-per-views because they're because on on actual shows because they are trying to attack the actual city in in which they are in and at that point it was definitely successful uh, they probably stole a couple of matches because of this feud <laughs> in terms of the time frame um, so yeah that was pretty awesome um, so what else then Bailey fought against Alicia um, with Finn Balor and Jinder in their corners, and the uh, show ended. Bailey won, and show ended with HBK, Kane, uh, Undertaker, and Triple H, basically creating a mess uh, before the final showdown. That was pretty awesome. I mean, uh, people definitely got super pumped about it. That was pretty cool. Um, so. Yeah, again, I, I want to cover things a little bit quicker. I don't want to like talk about these things for a lot. Again, the whole show was just built up to the Super Showdown. The same kind of was for the SmackDown. SmackDown basically started with uh, the fact that Samoa Joe needs to be fired. Uh, but then, because Styles basically filed charges against them, because uh, last week Samoa Joe got crazy and he tried to... Um, um, trespass uh, into the Styles' home once when Styles was on the actual show. Uh, it was kind of crazy and creepy at the same time, and awesome at the same time. It was weird, but still it was awesome. And uh, because of this, Styles basically dropped charges, and then he uh, sent a message, video message to the audience. Uh, that he needs to stay home because he needs to focus on protecting his family and until he's going to see Joe uh, like flying on the plane or 100% is going to show that Joe is on a plane on a, on a in, towards Australia um, he is not going to uh, basically leave his, ho his family then we saw a, a Fabulous Truth versus CN and Vega, uh, CN Almas and Vega, that was pretty cool again, I love Truth, uh, Truth is freaking awesome, um, and I believe they won, somehow, yeah, I actually don't remember who won, but either way that was pretty cool. Uh, then New Day was in, in like, uh, it was in a weird feud with the cooks, like New Day cooks, uh, with Mr. Bootyworth and the bar, it was the weirdest feud ever. I mean, like in the feud, but the, the weirdest kind of segment ever. Uh, I don't know, I didn't like it. It was kind of cheesy and it didn't work. Again, I don't like the bar in this particular moment. I love Sheamus separately and Cesaro separately as wrestlers, and they definitely work if they will become heels, but right now, as weird characters that not necessarily heels, not necessarily faces, and just like as the bar, they they don't work personally for me. So waiting for them to get split and go on their uh, single careers, um, because yeah, they're ready. They they're ready for it because it's already time. It's time for that. 
uh, we then we saw a Ty Dillinger, a Ty Dillinger trying to get revenge to Randy Orton because of the last week, because last week Randy Orton attacked Ty Dillinger for no freaking reasons. I thought that it might be the next target, but then uh, last week uh, they asked Randy Orton, does uh, Ty Dillinger your uh, new target? And Randy Orton said, nope. I just hate the fact that he is doing the perfect 10 thing, so he just basically annoyed by him, that's it. Uh, it was kind of disappointing, but at the same time cool, and he basically fought against Ray and Orton, and it was pretty... it, was a ma it wasn't a match, uh, because Randy Orton is basically just tried to broke his finger, and it was pretty awful. Uh, but I like the fact that Ty Dillinger now is somewhere, at, his, at least he's on TV, it's a good thing. Um, so, then we saw a uh, cool thing that in two weeks away, uh, Evolution is going to be reunited. Ric Flair, Triple H, Batista, and, uh, and uh, Randy Orton will reunite on SmackDown 1000, which is going to be an interesting thing. So, yeah. Uh, then we saw Shelton Benjamin uh, that was basically manipulated by The Miz. Um, um, to fight against Brian, that was pretty gruesome match, and at the end that was a pretty cool match. Um, Shelton won because of the Miz interference, I believe. I believe Shelton won. I should don't remember it. Um, Asuka fought against Peyton, Peyton Royce. The match itself was weird, but again, they needed to do something to build up this feud. Um, of course, like the Iconics was together, um, and Asuka and Naomi was together too. Mm and Asuka fought against Peyton. Um, then we saw Becky Lynch uh, like providing some type of a surprise for Charlotte. It was weird, but at the same time cool. Uh, I guess they just created a pretty decent build-up to the show. And the whole show was kind of uh, anticipated uh, uh, around the Aiden English revealing the, f the footage of uh, Meloaki <laughs> thing. And um, it was weird. I mean, I knew that Aiden English bluffing because Lana definitely didn't... Uh, she wasn't, kind of psychologically, she wasn't uh, afraid of whatever English is going to provide as an evidence, so-called evidence. But it definitely worked, he kind of got out of the context the fact that she wants him. Uh, but actually, I believe she wanted to ask, I want you to do something for me. But instead, he just like, cut the footage on a, I want you, and that's it. And, of course, out of the context, it looks like a bad thing. So, it was pretty awesome, I, I mean, um, that was cool. Uh, then we saw, of course, a, a Mixed Duck Challenge. Uh, last week, Mixed Duck Challenge. I don't know what exactly the last week was. Uh, last week, probably, we saw... Um, um, yeah, we knew that um, Mixed Duck Challenge is going to culminate on TLC. And um, last week, um, Country Domination fought against Maha... Mahalisha uh, and Mickey James and Bobby Lashley won. That was, by the way, the weirdest match ever. Um, and Asuka and Miz uh, fought against Fabulous Truth and they won too. Um, I actually like the dynamic of Fabulous, Fabulous, Fabulous Truth, so as I like the dynamic of the Mahali, Mahalisha, it's a pretty awesome team. And this week I actually don't remember who fought who. I believe this week was Bailey and Finn. They fought against. Um, it was main event, I believe. Um, they fought against um, Mahalisha, and that was actually pretty cool. No, 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 no. They fought against Jimmy Uso and Naomi, or Jay Uso and Naomi. Wait a minute. I need to check this out. We need to go into the SmackDown. Yep, Jimmy. Um, so, um, yeah, Jimmy and Naomi fought against... Uh, no, Jimmy and Naomi actually fought against Lana and Rusev as a main event. Yep, like two married couples. Um, and... Uh, Rusev and Lana probably... I actually forgot who won or who lost. Completely forgot. For some freaking reason. 
I don't believe that it matters, but... Uh, oh yeah, Naomi and Jimmy Uso won because of the problems between those two. But it actually match was awesome. This is the first match that when my, when, where Naomi actually showed her personality. I mean, um, I noticed that she definitely has chemistry with Lana and it all probably works with the confidence. She's much more confident in herself when she deals with Lana than uh, when she deals with something, s someone like Charlotte. When she deals with the Charlotte, she's definitely lacks confidence and because of this, she's, she's basically much more shy on on a ring in terms of the expressing herself than with Lana. Uh, with Lana, they're both dancers with a different cal caliber, but still. And because of this, they created a pretty awesome dynamic. And like I noticed before, that Naomi wasn't not necessarily good in mixed tag challenge because uh, you need to entertain people, and she's not that good at it because she just loves to wrestle. Um, she loves the athletic part of it, not necessarily entertaining part of it. Um, but she actually kind of did a lot of awesome stuff throughout this uh, match and it was awesome. And of course we saw um, Mahalisha fighting against Bailey and Finn. Yes, and uh, Bailey and Finn won and Mahalisha lost the second time in a row, which is a bad thing because they're a pretty awesome team. And Alicia Fox is freaking crazy, I mean, come on! I hope she's not that crazy in real life, because it would be a disappointing thing, but I don't know, she's definitely kind of acts super crazy, I don't know, maybe it's a character, maybe she's actually crazy in real life, who knows. Uh, I kind of saw her on Total Divas a couple of times, but again, um, she appears a little bit weird, but definitely not crazy, I don't know, maybe it's just a character. So, yeah, that's it for today, uh, for this part of the session. Again, we covered everything uh, WWE. I managed to do this in 20 minutes, on 20 plus minutes. Again, the first 20 minutes I kind of talked about the creative part, then we quickly covered WWE. Again, I'm going to talk about like these things a little bit more uh, later, um, because again, right now it's all uh, building towards a... Like, all feuds are going into the Super Showdown and into the Mixed Act Challenge. So almost all matches, they're just basically kind of building up to both of these shows. Um, so, yeah. Because of this, they're actually not that much. Mm. I guess I covered everything. Truly everything. The rest is just not that important at this point. Yep, I actually managed to cover everything. So yeah, uh, tomorrow we're going to cover, of course, NXT, we're going to cover 205 Life, and we're going to cover Mei Young Classic for these two... Um, weeks. Uh, yeah. So yeah, uh, that's it for the WWE part. Let's just go into the creative part and the rest of the session. We have about one, like one hour and fifteen minutes. The uh, second part of the session, we're going to talk about the actual kind of creating process. So let's just start. So again, uh, getting back to it again as a reminder, I decided to uh, cancel the last week's stream because I wasn't ready to start this type of process. I actually wanted to come up with the story for the CM Punk and um, I stumbled upon a pretty big problem that again when you're working with the movie characters you you have the opportunity to use the movie plot and the already existing character that's that's built pretty well and, and the psychology of this character is already there um, but with WWE it's not the same we don't have the full length of the character. Most of these things about the character, they are suggestible because of the fact that most of the characters in WWE, they're created in uh, like in the atmosphere of WWE itself. So the characters need to work only to support fighting promos, promos that basically work, works, work with fighting. So there's less psychology there. Um, uh, actual de deep psychology and actual reasoning. Most of the reasons is just like either insecurities or uh, 
the opposite of insecurities, uh, super confidence or whatever. So they're actually kind of all, like, you rarely could see depth in those type of things. Um, WWE sometimes tries to add depth, but unfortunately, since this is more the most is entertaining show, um, it's pretty easy to add the drama to to it uh, with the simple feuds. And uh, if you actually will start to analyze WWE in terms of the storytelling, that it's actually super similar and they're not adding anything new to it. They're just spicing something that already exists um, uh, with, like, th th that they already tried with something new. They're just spicing something that they already tried with something new. And the, the way that they're spicing it sometimes works awesome, sometimes not. Sometimes chemistry between characters works best and because of this feud seems like it's new and completely, like, super awesome. But in most cases it's actually not the case, I believe, and most of the feuds are similar. So, um, so let's just start with the first stage again. For now we're going to work with the idea stage, which, which again um, separates on two passes. Um, the first pass of the first stage is basic information, when we basically, which we're going to do today, uh, we will talk about inspiration behind the chosen persona, which is CM Punk, we will talk about simple character description, and we'll try to describe character CM Punk, and we also will try to, to, to choose a um, focused words and determine primary focuses, secondary focuses that we're going to work with and uh, then we will go into the, maybe not today, maybe tomorrow, we will go through the basic character sketch uh, stage which is basically this stage when we go through the reference gathering based on those keywords and then we will try to create a sketch based on this. Um, then we will go into the third, pa first, third pass which is going to be a brainstorming stage um, um, and the whole reason behind this is to come up with the final description uh, and based on this final description choose the best and create like some type of a final sketch that we're going to use to go into the composition stage. Um, so again, I'm not going to create regular portraits because of this, this process, as I already said before in my uh, Twitch streams, so is the YouTube streams, it's going to be for now, until I will get comfortable with this process, until I will get experience with this process, it's going to be super slow. So, it's def it definitely will, will take a lot of patience from my part and from your part in terms of the viewers. Uh, because again, I, do I definitely don't believe that any people will stay till the end. Uh, like for for instance, right now on YouTube or on Twitch, there are people who actually started to watch our streams like at the beginning because they thought, oh, okay, it might be something interesting. But because I'm going super slow and because I'm talking about a lot of stuff that they're not necessarily understanding why we need those, they started to fall off and lose interest uh, at this stage. And it's completely understandable. I'm not judging. But again, um, again, have patience. Um, in the end, we're definitely going to produce a pretty awesome work, I, I believe, hopefully. <laughs> um, because again, because if you want to put a lot of things into your work, and if you're going to actually not just wing it, but actually spend decent time on it and try to put as much you in your work as possible, like actually put 100%, it will pay off. So, uh, and if you just go into wing it, it might pay off, might not. So, I don't want to deal with uncertainties. I'm all about certainty and building this certainty. And because of this, I created this step-by-step -step process that will help me to control every step of the way. But since I'm still not, don't have experience in this process, I kind of, it's clear for me in terms of how to work with this process in terms of the theory, but in terms of the practice, it's still unclear because there are some things that I'm not familiar with and how to apply this all this theory in practice. So, but again, those things that we are working, going to work right now are actually going to help us to figure out how exactly we need to deal with approaching um, any type of problems it could be character, it could be illustration. So this process that I'm like showed right now, it's actually uh, applied more to a character design-like things. 
So uh, it works for the portraits, it works for character designs because because portraits are focused more on the character and less on situation. Um, and it's pretty similar uh, to the illustration pipeline. Uh, illustration pipeline is usually has much more complexity uh, because now we have a focus on the situation itself. And instead of focusing on the character traits, we're actually focusing on the situation and how those character traits are going to be viewed or depicted throughout the situation. So again, situation in illustration is, is the most important thing. And right now we don't need to focus on the situation itself. Instead, we're going to focus on a based scenario, which is going to revolve around a straight edge society um, in which steampunk were, was a long time ago, probably in a year of, yeah, we need to find where ex when exactly Simpanko was in the Straight Edge Society? From 2009 to 2010. Um, this was most me me memorable run in Simpanko's career for me personally because I loved Straight Edge Society. Uh, it was pretty awesome, and the the fact that WWE booked this um, this kind of feud and not necessarily feud, but this storyline so badly, uh, they didn't invest anything into this feud, and they just basically like sweep this feud under the rug uh, and done with it and it was super disappointing because I believe if you would made the straight edge society mm, the like if you would uh, use straight edge society uh, and apply the proper book into it and created a decent like um, usually the results of the matches were, were, was the problem because of the fact that straight edge society lost every time and didn't want anything almost it was the problem of this booking i mean a straight edge society definitely had to flourish uh, before it will be destroyed but instead they just basically put it uh, under destruction right from the beginning it it didn't got anywhere so again we're going to get to it um so in most cases, um, um, yeah, I'm going to focus basically on these three stages for today because we're not, we don't have that much time. Um, uh, huh. Sorry in advance for a problems in uh, uh, in spelling. I sp spell I, I might spell this wrong, so I actually didn't went I I I, I didn't put this one in a uh, spelling corrector, so I might basically create a lot of mistakes in here in terms of the spelling hopefully not but still uh, I'm going to discuss everything so um, again let's start so with painting part of these streams we are going to work with the actual making WW superstars so um, we're going to paint them but before painting of course we need to come up with an idea what we need to paint so um, the first thing we need to establish is on the idea stage we need to know the character itself and it's pretty hard for WWE characters, as I said before, because when it comes down to WWE characters, they're not that defined. They are kind of, I don't know, they're some, they're not transparent. They are on the surface. You never know the characters themselves because there's not that many situations in wrestling that could reveal the character traits. Because usually all the character traits that you will see in a real characters, they are revealed through the situations that they are um, going through. And when it comes down to the um, WWE characters, they're usually going through the similar situations. They have only two places that they could basically appear. They could appear either backstage or on the ring, in the ring. And because we have only two kind of, I don't know, um, only two surfaces on which those um, situations could appear uh, and transpire, we have pretty limited um, control in terms of the understanding the character traits, understanding the social role, overall setting, and etc. So in, in most cases, I'm going to come up with my own things. I believe this is the only way that I'm going to deal with it. Not just I'm not going to take the same thing as the actual straight edge society was created for and how is it was used instead i will actually try to create my own version of the straight edge society that i would want to basically happen um and we're not going to talk about like super crazy stuff when it comes down to the straight edge society of course we will come up with the like 
final uh, reaction description is going to actually consist of some type of element of situation. We're definitely going to put CM Punk on a ring, in a ring, and preaching or in a backstage on a backstage area. Uh, on some type of meeting, we will figure this. Uh, we will figure out um, this thing throughout this process. So I started with inspiration behind the idea, and again, uh, I uh, don't necessarily remember everything about the Straight Edge Society era because it was a long time ago, a lot like about ten years ago. Nine, it was definitely a long time ago. Because of this, uh, I needed to uh, basically go into the Wikipedia, and I basically read everything that was like around the straight edge society area like like what this character did uh, like uh, how they created the feud again as a reminder uh, first CM Punk started this feud against Jeff Hardy and it was uh, around the time when Jeff Hardy got problems with the drugs and because of this they kind of created like CM Punk was a straight edge right from the beginning and against drugs against alcohol um, uh, and so um, against cigarettes, and because of this, he used this to basically feud against Jeff Hardy, and it was basically a cre this th this feud actually created uh, was created from this uh, kind of um, storyline, and after this feud was ended. Uh, CM Punk went and created his own straight edge society. He recruited a uh, formerly known as Fastest Luke Gallows. Um, nowadays, we know Luke Gallows is uh, in the club with uh, Luke uh, with uh, Carl Anderson. Um, so, and basically, CM Punk at that time uh, started to recruit different people into his straight edge society. He started to preach um, his word, which is again, straight edge society is a uh, living by the mantra, don't drink, don't smoke, don't do drugs. And he tried to preach this uh, to the people with his oratory skills by convincing them to join the society. Uh, so, um, in most cases, he was not necessarily convincing them to join the society. He just basically kind of trashed their uh, their beliefs and said that they are killing themselves, they are idiots, they are stupid, that they are choosing to drink, they are choosing to smoke, they are choosing to do drugs and etc. And they are numbing themselves. And it was actually a pretty awesome message. I mean, uh, the problem was like that WWE used this message to... Uh, put a hate on CM Punk in terms of the heel element. So instead of being a face, he actually became a heel. Um, no one likes uh, people who tell other people what to do and how to live. And because of this, you will end up a heel right away, no matter what type of character you are <laughs> and what type of person you are, I guess. Because um, we all kind of, I don't know, uh, We're telling ourselves uh, that our life is the perfect life, although in reality it's not, and we could definitely do better. But instead, we just kind of taking the situation that we're already in and don't want to change anything. And when CM Punk started to preach, you don't have to drink, and almost every people are drinking, and it's a problem. Um, almost like th there's a lot of people that are smoking, and they're actually killing themselves by doing this, and of course, drugs. It's completely clear that they're bad. So. Um, and again, all these things, it's a pretty good message when it comes down to the what Straight Edge Society was presented in, in the WWE. Um, so, Straight Edge Society actually is more than just not smoke, no, don't drink and do drugs. Again, I'm not going to talk about it, it's a little bit more like non-PG topic, because of this we're not going to talk about it. So, again, uh, we're going to focus only on those three things, don't drink, don't smoke, don't, don't do drugs, which is like, which are the positive thing in here. So, again, and uh, throughout the Straight Edge Society and CM Punk, I just basically uh, decided to take this one as an, as an inspiration. So. In order to create a CM Punk's portrait, I decided that I need to choose a basic inspiration behind the idea and choose a straight edge society era with CM Punk. So it's it might be the case that I'm going to draw CM Punk with the long hair, with the beard. Actually, I want to portray CM Punk as a godlike character. Um, hopefully, I will do this. Um, and uh, 
if I will manage to portray CM Punk as a godlike god -like character, then, then this illustration definitely going to be a unique one. It's, it's not just going to be a CM Punk standing with his fists and kind of straight edge society axis, whatever. Instead, it's actually going to be a something like a godlike character from the book or whatever. Um, so I'm actually kind of already picturing it from my mind based on this description, which is pretty cool. So based on this description, uh, then we go in into the, again, to read it, the straight edge society, uh, this is inspiration by the idea, living by the mantra, don't drink, don't smoke, don't do drugs, and trying to preach this to the people with his oratory skills by convincing them to join the society. So this is basically the inspiration behind the idea. Uh, so again, it's not necessarily the same it, it, as it was presented in WWE, but again, we will change those stories in order to make those characters look a little bit more uh, deep because again, if I'm just going to take a character and all existing things from WWE, I'm, I doubt that I'm going to create a, like depth. I'm not going to add the depth into this character because again, sometimes WWE lacks depth in terms of the storytelling. You need to find it. You actually need to seek depth and try to extract it in the place it, in the places that is actually none depth at all <laughs> no depth at all uh, sometimes and this is what i'm what i'm doing with wwe i understand that it's kind of on the surface and you never they're they, they're rarely diving into the complex issues but at the same time you could find a complexity into it if you will if you if you will want to do that and this is something that I will try to, I try to do usually when I'm watching WWE. So again, and, and it inspires me too. Uh, it's a long reigning weekly episodic show in history. So, and they're surviving by telling the stories throughout the so many years. And you definitely could learn a thing or two from that. Uh, considering the fact that they're not using that many complicated storylines so to attract the viewers so because of this it's still a good thing to learn from and to get experience from uh, regardless of its uh, on the surface element like with no depth mm, this is one of the reasons why I like Bray Wyatt and because when when he talks he actually talks about the deep stuff but no one's listened to him this is probably one of the reasons why Bray Wyatt not that not that successful as he probably should be because when he talks he talks about so freaking deep stuff and people just not listening to him because he talks about deep philosophy that people are just skipping through their ears because they they came to rest and uh, distract themselves from work and from their busy lives and to basically distract them, distract themselves. And when you see these type of characters, such as Bray Wyatt, and talking about the real life, and I don't know, and not necessarily real life, but again, Bray Wyatt actually talks about a lot of awesome stuff. And sometimes it's pretty bad, perverted, but still, um, you could find depth in there too. So yeah, getting back to the Straight Edge Society, which was pretty awesome idea. It was around that time when WWE uh, transitioned into the PG area, I believe, somewhere. It's actually happened earlier, in 2006, 2005, 2006, something like this. Um, but either way, um, it was just new, and the boundaries was still kind of touched upon. You, you, you didn't knew at that time what topic you could touch upon, what not. One of the reasons I believe that they are cancelled Straight Edge Society and because of the fact that it was too cult-like, and uh, it was actually, it truly looked like a cult, and um, it, and because of this, it was kind of too much for audience, and they decided, nope, we need to close it. Although with Bray Wyatt, they created a cult too, and it was fine. So I don't know, it's weird. Either way, so based on this description, uh, I decided to come up with the simple character traits, so um, or simple character description. So usually, simple character des description description consists of one, two, three, four, five, six elements. The sixth element, usually the f the final one, which will help us to predict the type of reaction that we need to portray from the character, and since as I said before, character design, uh, um, working with portraits, it's more like working with the characters, with the character design, we need to focus on the reaction itself. So we need to basically kind of picture and capture the reaction of the CM Punk in a certain moment um, in order to 
depict him as a, an as an actual character. So, and this reaction is definitely needs to be somehow explained throughout today, hopefully. So, yeah, we will start with traits. So, in terms of the traits, I decided, okay, let's just give him a trait. It's inspiring. He definitely inspiring. He could inspire with his uh, or oratory skills. Um, again, this is my personal kind of view. You could perceive him as a godlike person, because if you're a cult leader, you definitely will be kind of a godlike person in this particular story. Um, again, um, it's a not real story. It's twisted reality in terms of the overall setting in the time of unhealthy lifestyles. Um, so, um, I mean, most of the people are living in unhealthy lifestyles in this story, and because of this, I decided, okay, um, the setting is basically creates additional information for us. So, yeah. So, let's just start working and, uh, yeah. Uh, so, traits, inspiring, godlike, confident, uh, I don't believe that it's right, but still. Um, char charismatic, um, and we will, we definitely need to come up with a couple of more, because character traits is something that we're going to use to actually figure out um, the primary focuses. So I'm going to choose one of those focuses as a primary one, and I'm going to use it to, to go through the reference search and find exactly what I need um, to present CM Punk as a god, for instance, like in this particular instance, uh, to portray that he is the leader of the Straight Age Society. Uh, okay, leader, by the way, it's a good idea to put a as a character trait as a leader, because it's a trait. So, he's a leader. Um, so, for now, we're good to finish on that. Maybe we'll add something later. So, for now, uh, CM Punk is basically a inspiring, godlike, uh, in a straight edge society, uh, um, not in real life, of course, <laughs> again, we're talking about the story, um, uh, inspiring, godlike, confident, um, charismatic, and basically leader, um, his social role in this particular instance, since this is WWE, and he doesn't necessarily have a social role, has a social role, because how could you actually, like, name a social role for the wrestler? Uh, I guess preacher of a healthy lifestyle, and this is the only thing that I came came up with. And I believe when it comes down to the wrestlers, it's always going to be a social role. Uh, we're going to usually come up with the personal social role uh, description, which is going to be pretty close to the WWE and usually works with the preacher, or uh, like when something when someone is basically just tries to portray some type of a message. And based on that, there's always going to be probably a preacher, preacher of something. Preacher of healthy lifestyle, preacher of, I don't know, anti-bullying or whatever. So all these things were probably going to uh, slightly change, but the preacher element will stand because of the because of the fact that WWE not, not necessarily works with the depth storylines and they are usually all revolved around um, interacting with audience through the promos and interacting with the audience through the matches, basically fighting. And because of this, the social role is always going to be pretty limited. Um, so, so we're definitely not going to give those characters a actual job. I mean, like their work in an office or there's their some type of broadcasters or whatever. No, actually, broadcaster is a job we could pick. Uh, actually, social role as a wrestler could be a good idea because he is a wrestler. Yep, so basically two roles. He's a wrestler, which basically will and like give us the information about the fact that he needs to have some type of a gear. Um, and uh, he's a preacher of a healthy lifestyle, which is again just an overall social role that he uh, tries to kind of be a part of. Um, or fulfill. The next thing is the overall setting. Overall setting again, uh, since uh, WWE usually works with a twisted reality, in this particular instance this is definitely a twisted reality, so um, yeah. 
So yeah, we're going to work with the twisted reality in here and the time of unhealthy lifestyle. So uh, what what exactly twisted reality means that we're just basically going to come up with the, our personal twisted reality um, plot that in the time of unhealthy life lifestyles, Simpunk basically decided decides to form because of his beliefs of straight edge society and basically preaches this message um, message of the straight edge society. Uh, using his oratory skills by convincing the uh, people to join the society and live healthy life and basically uh, stop living unhealthy. So in this particular instance we're actually going to see CM Punk in a positive message so he's definitely not going to be portrayed as a okay, crazy cult leader. Um, I believe like I'm going to choose to actually portray him as a person who actually wants to help others in this, in this particular instance. Um, Again, adding a personal touch to it, because we not necessarily just need to take it from already existing uh, story. Uh, the next thing is active surroundings. Again, as I said before, acting... So, um, uh, I already talked about on Twitch streams the difference between uh, those two. So, overall, overall setting is something that basically surrounds the world in which this character is basically living. In this particular instance, this is a twisted reality in the time of unhealthy lifestyles, which actually affects not only CM Punk, but all people around them. So it's basically an overall setting. Active surroundings, it's a little bit more in-depth way of presenting the things that are not around all people, but around CM, Punk's, uh, CM Punk only. And this character only. So because of this, we kind of know that okay, CM Punk is definitely. We're going to probably see him on a members meet meetings when he basically gathers his members, and uh, usually it's going to be backstage because again, it's going to be in inside the arena. And because of this, um, of course, we could create it like a different type of surroundings. We could choose a some type of rallies. Uh, with a lot of people on the street in here and add this information here but I don't believe that we need to do that because again um, we're going to keep those things short let's just add just members meetings backstage and in the ring when he's going to basically preach uh, so these are two places in which steampunk is going to be viewed the most and we're going to choose one of them in order to create a background so for instance we're going to create a CM Punk and then we're going to create a background of like human-like figures uh, to which CM Punk is going to, to basically uh, so basically like the view from the camera in WWE um, so again the active surroundings will help us to come up with the background for the illustration the scenario, we're not going to create an actual scenario because this is exactly usually the scenario. So the inspiration behind the idea, the more we're going to work on it, the better we will come up with the scenario. And again, we're, we know the scenario, it's completely clear and it works with in conjunction with the, uh, in the time of unhealthy lifestyles. Mm. I actually could add this information in the time of unhealthy lifestyles, CM Punk decides to create a straight edge society. Um, ta -dun, ta -dun, ta -dun, ta -dun. But we're not going to do that. Instead, let's just assume that it's out there. Uh, so again, scenario: the straight edge society living to do, do, and this is exactly what we need. The context uh, of the overall setting is not important for the plot itself. I mean, not for the plot, but for the idea itself. If it was the plot, then we would integrate it. But it's not the plot. It's just a short scenario that will help us to describe the situation in which the Punk might find himself. So, and now we need to come up with a reaction, which is not going to be an easy one to do. So let's just think. Um, so when it comes down to these things, ideally I will try to uh, to do this type of thing outside of the streams. Again, unfortunately I didn't have time to do this outside of the streams because I'm working on the similar thing besides CM Punk a portrait on Emily portrait on Twitch and because of this and besides that I have a lot of work besides that and because of this I just don't have time to do this outside of the stream so uh, because of this this stream is going to be super kind of uh, it's not going to have that much work I believe and 
um, we're actually going to use it as an analytical thing. So, let's just think. Mm. So, we have an inspiration behind the idea that it's strange society, living by the mantra, don't drink, don't smoke. Oh, by the way, it could be a good idea to actually put the name CM Punk. It could be a good idea to do the same for the MLE. I actually open MLE portrait uh, thing to as an example because I might use it as an like kind of to compare things. So this is our second stage of working with Emily thing, uh, with the Emily portrait. We're going to get there with Simpunk 2. Um, so in most cases right now we're working on this first stage, which is again knowing the character. Um, so let's just, while I'm here, implement changes in here too, into our description by putting in the description that this is an Emily, because I actually didn't create this information at all. I guess, I, I get that it's not relevant to CM Punk, but again. Emily. So yeah, now we have information that we're writing right here, we're working with Emily and etc. So with, with Emily, in terms of the reaction, I knew that she needs to directly communicate with the viewer, I knew that she needs to evoke the sense of discomfort and wonder at the same time, and I knew that I wanna, like, I wanted to her I wanted her to feel something and try to do something and be something that basically um, interact with the viewer. But the steampunk, it's not going to be the case because in steampunk's case, we actually not going to create the direct interaction with the viewer because I'm not seeing steampunk like in my brain looking at the viewer. It's actually going to be a um, indirect interaction with the viewer. indirect interaction with the viewer again first streams are going to be super slow so I'm probably going to go over a lot of theoretical stuff, and it's completely fine. I mean, you might not like it, but again, uh, wait till you're going to get something out of it, and then you might start watching again. You could skip that one if you don't feel like it's necessary, or you could it, it could help you. But again, I'm a proponent of uh, things that information is is power and. If you have the information, if you if you will spend time on gathering this information, you will be rewarded in the end. So, and you're not going to be rewarded much if you don't spend time on gathering the information. So, I mean, the type of information that I'm gathering right now might be excessive to someone. Uh, but again, it all depends personally for you. If you feel like you need to gather more information to actually spark your idea in your mind and come up with like how exactly you need to view a portrait, especially if you have a uh, low visual visualization skills, so you can't visualize from your mind. You could work with references, but you can't visualize from your mind. In those cases, exist specifically. I created this type of a pattern, and uh, not the pattern. Um, you can call it a pattern pattern because we're going to use this pattern to create all projects. Um, again. Every uh, everything has to have an inspiration behind the idea. Every idea has to have an inspiration behind it, um, and then based on this idea, you have to come up with the simple character traits um, that will help you to identify the visual, the first visual look in your mind, how exactly you want to uh, show CM Punk, for instance, or your character. So, um, indirect interaction with the viewer or no interaction at all. So that means that he's not going to look directly into the viewer, he's probably going to look somewhere out there. It's like he's going to be 
in his own mind. Um, which again helps me to imagine him and I'm going to put this information as a reaction. So in direct interaction with the viewer, again, I'm open I'm, I'm open to suggest to like in direct interaction with the viewer it could be no interaction at all or it could be interaction that basically um, attracts the viewer but not not in the way not in a direct way. So he still interacts with the viewer because he kind of stands here, he for instance finished his preaching and now he is soaking uh, the energy. Uh, it's still interaction, the interaction continues even after he's kind of turned his head to the different side and not necessarily directly interacting with the viewer. But it could be perceived as no interaction too because of this I could, I put this one, this one too. So in direct interaction with the viewer, um, that has to evoke. A every type of interaction has to evoke something from the viewer or from the character itself. That has to evoke um, the sense has to evoke sense of okay. What we did in Amelie though, in Amelie says to has that have to evoke sense of discomfort and wonder at the same time in the viewer. So right now we're thinking about the viewer first, and then we are going to think about how this character needs to be perceived from the character standpoint. Uh, I don't know if it's the right thing to do, have, has, not that good in grammar. Um, this is the downfall by learning in English with something except like the actual programs, learning it by yourself almost, by watching WWE and movies just like watching things and learning English that way, listening to music and etc. Uh, that have to evoke sense of probably importance um, I believe when a viewer is going to look at CM Punk in this particular instance a viewer needs to feel important But it's pretty hard thing to do when you're not directly interacting with the viewer. It's like, okay, I'm turned in my head from you, you're not important. So it has to evoke sense of maybe the, the, the opposite, unimportance or inimportance. I don't know. For now, we're going to keep importance. To evoke the sense of importance. Uh, in Amelie, I actually created two feelings uh, at the same time. So it has to like provoke sense of discomfort and wonder. In here, I believe um, we're going to create two feelings too: uh, the sense of importance and inspiration. And we're going to focus on one of them. And the second one is going to be kind of a secondary one. Inspiration. to evoke a sense of importance and inspiration. Uh, again, I believe definitely CM Punk needs to inspire with his thing. Um, maybe we will switch them with this, the things that CM Punk tries to do. So now we are going to describe what CM Punk wants to do. So right here, Emily, she tries to be nice, affable and interested, but it reads the wrong way because of something. But in this particular instance, we need to now create the intention 
for the CM Punk. So the first thing it's the how viewer perceives CM Punk, and the second thing is how CM Punk wants viewer to perceive him. So we need to think about these two psychological elements usually in order to control reaction because reaction is not one way thing. It usually works both ways. Mm, so in direct interaction with the viewer and in here he wants <sighs> what he wants. He wants to appear godlike. Okay, not godlike. He wants to appear confident. He wants to. appear confident. Hopefully, it's right though. Ugh. What? Seriously? It's a completely different word? <laughs> Confident. Confident. Ugh. It's a completely different word. Okay, sometimes grandma, it's a good thing. No, knowing the spelling. <laughs> oh, snap. Oh, whatever. Okay, people convincing la 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 confidence. Charismatic leader. Uh, so, he, I, I don't believe that he will be able to control the charismatic element. He just either going to be perceived as charismatic or not. He definitely can't control the godlike element because the godlike element is the result of being confident, I believe, in this particular instance. Uh, the inspiration thing, he can't control it because, again, he can't be inspiring. Uh, this is something that works with the inspiration. He also can't, uh, I don't know, radiate importance because, again, it's it works with the same the godlike element and inspiring thing. Although this is this these are his traits. Uh, and he kind of has them, but they are not necessarily mm, This is the way that viewers are perceiving him not And of course this this is the way that he feels too, but he can't force Those things to people I mean By his will I mean he can think about those. Um, he wants to appear confident, so because of this, yeah, people could appear more confident than the other people. So the confidence is something that you can control. Um, so, so he wants to appear confident. Um, and be a leader. Not a leader, though. Be a role model. role model for others so in this particular instance I believe this is the exact thing that we need to focus on so again role model um, and again when it comes down to his traits he can't we can't add uh, the role model into the tra into traits um, because it's not a trait I mean, it's a result of doing something that you believe in and as a result producing a good influence and then yeah, so definitely not a character trait. 
So yeah, this is kind of it. So indirect interaction with the viewer. So that means that he's not going to look at like not is not going to direct his eyes into the viewer. Uh, then um, the second thing is uh, this interaction uh, has to have has to evoke have to, has has to or have to I don't know like how to properly do it. I know that has you need to use has in the time that you use a person if you look like work with interaction it's probably have because of this I'm not sure so this is something that <laughs> whatever that have to evoke a sense of, it's still I believe it's still understandable it doesn't matter like what type of grammar I'm going to use it the more the most important thing is to how to work with this so and like the small problem with the grammar not going to change the the whole idea of this so that have to evoke sense of importance and inspiration so yeah and he wants to appear confident and be a role model for others so yeah I, I guess this is kind of it for the reaction and the same we kind of did here um, here so yep she tries to be a certain way but in this particular instance it reads the wrong way but in in our instance it actually reads the same way so there's no uh, conflict in here and because there's no conflict conflict we're not going to add this conflict so the way that it is is going to work so he wants to appear confident be a role, role model for others and it works because he wants so uh, I could just basically uh, he appears confident no let's just work with intentions yep intentions intent I believe adding intent would be a good idea though intent and we need to add this one here too because intent is freaking important intent um, so yeah, saving the Emily thing again. I'm using just I'm using it just for an example uh, because again for me I, this is still new, and um, I need to compare similarities with this project to the Simpunks project because of the fact that it's much harder to integrate those type of elements of control into the portrait elements of psychological control into the portrait when you deal with WW superstars because of the fact that they are. They don't have that much of a control and that much depth to them. Because of this, it's much harder going to work with it. And again, some characters are going to be a little bit easy to more easy to work with. Some characters are going to be hard to work with. It all depends what type of character we're going to choose. For instance, with AJ, I definitely it, with AJ is much. It's going to be much easier to work with AJ because AJ was a crazy person um, in the storyline, and because of this, it's going to be easy to take this craziness and create a idea behind it. And etc. So some characters again, it's much easier to work with them. And for characters such as, for instance, I don't know, Ty, 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 Ty Dillinger, or for instance Peyton Royce, which are going to be probably the next uh, characters after those, um, after Simpunk and AJ, um, it's going to be much harder to come up, came up with uh, how to portray them as the characters in the portraits. Especially for Ty Dillinger, it's eventually it's going to be much harder to do with with men than the, than with women, for some reason I don't know why. Maybe because which is weird because they're not putting that much work into the women characters as much as they're putting work into the men's characters, but maybe because of the fact that women's characters could become much more diverse, they have more potential than the man's character because man's character the only thing that man character could be is just a like 
just super confident man and be a man and that's it <laughs> be a family man or the fighting man or the man who wants to bring pain with women we have more possibilities when it comes down to developing characters they could become crazy uh, like crazy men they're not necessarily working for some reason um, they could become crazy no actually crazy man works um, Matt Hardy Wyatt mm, I don't know for some reason I see more potential in women characters than in men characters maybe because there's more gear Yep, definitely. This is probably the case. Because women usually have more gear and this gear and the haircut. And haircut and gear, the combination of haircut and gear give them usually gives them more possibilities because haircut could completely change the character. Gear could completely change the character. When it comes down to the men, they don't necessarily have the choice in the gear. It's either trousers, <laughs> wrestling trousers or trunks, how they called, or the regular, uh, I don't know, again, they're just limited in terms of the gear, and because this limitation, and limitation in haircuts, because there's not necessarily a limitation to haircuts, no, there is, they could go over the board with haircuts, they usually are similar, so Bray Wyatt has dreads, which is awesome, he, that, it definitely adds to the character, uh, Matt Hardy has crazy hair, um, Jeff Hardy has a pretty interesting hair too, but most of the characters they have a similar hair, like Styles just has regular hair, um, Kevin Owens has regular hair, Sami Zayn has regular hair, <laughs> Ty, Jin, Ty, Jin, Ty Dillinger has a different type of hair because he has like the cuts in here, razor cuts, so I don't know. So it's a pretty interesting topic that we're going to discuss throughout the working with different characters, but it's definitely an interesting one. I mean. Learn how to extract the char the character where their character is not present. It's something that you need to learn, I believe, as an artist. Because there's not going to be every time that you're going to have a pure and crazy big character description. Sometimes you're going to have one quality and sometimes this quality is just going to be a visual one. And you need to, based on the visual one, create all these elements, create traits integrate a social role, integrate overall setting, come up with an action of surroundings, come up, came up with a scenario and come up, came up with the reaction that is going to control the whole final description and in the end will control your illustration. So it's, it's a hard one, but I love challenges and I'd rather face this challenge than made up challenges that based on the practical skills because for me this skill is much more important than just like practical skill because again I already talked about it in my um, Twitch stream that practical skills it's something that you can basically develop uh, pretty quickly uh, if you will spend time on it and these type of skills understanding how to create a character how to develop character how to integrate psychology inside of the character make this character real or should I say believable because this is the thing that usually makes character real, is believability. We need to believe that this character could exist in real life, um, or, or exists already in real life, um, as an example. So this is much more, in my opinion, much more, much more awesome skill than just ha like know how to draw awesome lines or create awesome renders. Because again, this is something that you could learn to do uh, relatively quickly without without that much uh, efforts to it. Um, you just need to spend time on doing this and that's it. Right here you need to analyze, you need to dig deep into the psychology and to your mind, analyze things, and it's much harder than just basically repeating stuff. So because of this I believe this, for me, personally, again, I'm not pushing this to everyone. This is just in my opinion works for me and for me it works because the information is power for me personally for other people information is nothing although I believe at some point they will understand that information is power because if you know something you could apply it to your practice if you don't know something or anything um, 
if you don't notice something, you're never going to apply it into your practice. So, there's a logic there, <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> Whatever. Um, so, he wants to appear confident, uh, be a role model for others. Why I put N in here? So, seriously, what I wanted... Let's just check the sound. Model for others. Um, I forgot what I talked about. I got carried away with speaking about this topic. We have about 20 minutes, uh, so let's just quickly wrap up the idea thing and maybe uh, we need to find, uh, work with the keywords. So he wants to appear confident, be a role model for, for others. Which is again being example. Um, be, being an example. Hmm. I guess I'm not going to put anything end. But it reads the wrong way. Oh yeah. Uh, remember. So he wants to appear confident, be a role a role model for others, and it works. And it reads. And it reads. That's it. So. I guess in terms of the intent, intent either could be read by view by the viewer or not. So if his attempt to appear confident and be a role model for others successful, then it's going to be integrated into the actual pose and into the actual st statue or the body language of his. If it's not going to read well, then we're going to create something the opposite way. So rules try to add some element of discomfort or um, uh, the misleading interaction. Um, so because the result of interaction either going to be successful or not successful. Successful interactions usually the ones that um, intended a certain way and they result in the same way that was intended. Uh, when it comes down to the unsuccessful interactions uh, such for instance in here with Emily we have the unsuccessful interaction he she tries to to be perceived a certain way but it but it reads the wrong way and because of this he looks a little bit creepy instead of being just like uh, nice and affable and interested it's like she's she, she not successful in that CM Punk is going to, going to be successful in appearing confident and being a role model because it's going to read. So, yeah, that's it. So, I guess that's kind of it. We will kind of come up with the description. I don't believe that we need more uh, because, again, if we would need to create more character traits, we would already implement them from, from here. Again, the role model element is just being inspiring. The element of inspiration, again, is connected to being a role model. Uh, the level of importance is going to result in confidence or the opposite, the confidence is going to create the level of importance. So again, they're just working together. So because of this, let's just continue into our keywords, our focuses. And the last thing that we're going to do before the end in the stream, we're going to come up with the... not come up, we, we're going to establish uh, the keywords we're not going to establish texture and colors, probably neither expression. Maybe we will establish some type of elements of expression. Yep, yeah, usually reaction works within, within, within expression. But right now we need to focus on the keywords that we're going to use in search in order to find a proper references for certain trait. So usually the keywords are in social role and in character traits. Usually these are and if you're working with illustration, then, of course, the surrounding is important, too. Yeah, right here, we actually have an additional focus in surrounding, an additional focus in the social role. The same thing is going to be for steampunk. Uh, so, go. Uh, wait a minute. Keywords. Yep. Keywords and focuses are that. Yep. Good. 
save and choose and go so the keywords um, so first we're going to just establish keywords so uh, in terms of the trades um, we're not going to choose all of them we're going to choose all only those whom who only those that we might actually find so we could find charismatic if we actually will try to search charismatic we definitely might might find something in the in search we definitely could find something in terms of the leader we definitely could find something if we will search godlike um, in terms of inspir inspiring and confidence i don't believe so because if you will put in search inspiring you're just going to like find a lot of inspiring quotes but not necessarily inspiring no we actually could find inspiring images too so actually in this particular instance and we also could find uh, the confident people like what what translates confidence in the person like the pump up chest or i don't know something so i guess all of them actually are searchable so because of this we're establishing all keywords because all of them they actually kind of connected because again inspiring and godlike are kind of the same in in one area uh, the confident and charismatic probably inspiring charismatic it's in one thing no actually, usually leader and charismatic are the same and confident it kind of works both so in most cases they are going to be pretty close so it, it's like synonyms syn 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 synonymous syn syn synonymous things um, that they are similar in terms of what they mean so because of that we're just going to use a different thing to find a different type of references but then of course we're going to use Pinterest Pinterest is a place to gather references. I don't believe that I will start to use uh, to gather references today because it will take me a lot of time. I'm 100% sure about it. The last time that I searched references for Emily, I spent for probably two hours to do that. Um, so this is something that I'm probably going to do outside of the streams. Um, so yeah, again, we have about 15 minutes till the end. Um, overall setting. Um, what's there? yeah so so this is a primary focus the second is we're not going to be able to find something that preaches up healthy lifestyle in terms of the social role because of this the only visual element that we will implement into our illustration in terms of the social role is the fact that he is a wrestler in terms of the presenting a visual for the wrestling gear so it's going to help us to choose a wrestling gear for steampunk i still don't know what he what exactly he needs to wear this is something we need to come up with because we might just take something that he already wore in straight edge society black short with uh straight edge thing uh, but again we're going to create a bust so we're going to crop uh steampunk to, to towards the shoulders and because of this i don't believe that we will be able to showcase all elements because of this we might integrate something on our own maybe we'll create some type of a i don't know things on his shoulders we'll come up something with something along the way but again wrestler gear dot something that we need to see there somehow it needs to be present uh, and for the man it's much harder to implement because again men usually either have something on top like in terms of the shirt or don't and Either they're naked on top or not. And with Simbank right now it's much harder because at that time he didn't have that many tattoos as he has right now. Right now he has a lot of tattoos on the chest that we could implement. But since we're working with imp representing Simbank from that era, he's going to have a long hair, he's going to have a crazy beard, and he's actually going to appear like God. So, mm, yeah. So because of this, we're going to focus on that. So overall setting, again, um, we're not going to be able to implement anything from this because twisted reality, unhealthy lifestyle, nope, not. Don't believe that we're going to implement that one. The same kind of was for Emily. You can't implement the reality element to it in Paris. You could, uh, like, if you would create a like specific background, for instance, if you would work with Paris, you would put an uh, elf, what? 
how it's actually called in, in English. Um, actually don't know how it's called in English though. Paruski Eiffel Bobashnia. Eiffel Tower. Eiffel Tower. Eiffel Tower. So yeah, we could put an Eiffel Tower there. Uh, and that way it could become a part of the control. But in this particular instance, since we're working with the wrestling character, none of the background elements are going to tell us where it's like, like about this twisted reality. Unless we're going to show uh, the drinking audience and smoking audience, which, I don't know, there's actually potential there. We might think about it. But again, I'm not. It's not searchable. I mean, these res these results are not freaking searchable. I can't put in the search twisted reality, and that's it. I could put in search on healthy lifestyle. So this is something that we might think about, like as an additional focus that we could put, in addition to the fact that he is a wrestler. Mm, yeah, let's just choose that one because you might put in search on healthy lifestyle, and you could get a lot of visuals that could give you the directions into what you need to put in background because right now I'm, f I'm working on not only on the portrait itself I'm, I'm already thinking about the inner composition which is again the CM Punk itself how he poses and etc at the same time I'm thinking about the outer composition something that's on background and how it's going to be represented and what type of references we're going to use to do that because we need to create a pretty decent contrast of unhealthy lifestyle to create a completely healthy person to actually set the role model element because if we're not going to be able to find something like role model uh, in search and get inspired by it because each person has a different role model the understanding for, uh, for unhealthy lifestyle usually is the same for every person oh snap Ugh, that was weird <laughs> so mm, yeah so because of this, if we will put on a healthy lifestyle into the search, we actually might find a lot of visuals that we could use as an opposite, uh, as an opposite to come up with how our model needs to look like. So it's just going to be a opposite reference search. So instead of searching a role model, we're going to search for unhealthy lifestyle and then create an opposite from unhealthy lifestyle, which will be a role model element. So this is the way how you could approach those type of things. Again, just learning how to work with information because again, every person like, okay, me, you and five other people could have the same amount of information, but if they don't know how to work with this information and extract um, everything that they need from this information, some people who could do that will be more successful than those who can't. So again, what are we doing right now? It might seem super weird and unnecessary, but again, we're learning how to extract information in the, in the most um, practical and at the same time, how to probably say it? I forgot the word. My English today is pretty bad. <sighs> Helpful. Yeah, so we're basically extracting things that are going to be helpful for us. If you feel like this information is going to be helpful for you, you need to actually extract this help... help... Ugh. whatever. Uh, my English is bad today. Active surroundings. In active surroundings, I don't know if we actually need to take something from here. In here, we actually took a store as a active surrounding until I actually started to disc to find uh, to create a final description I wasn't sure what type of active surroundings I'm going to choose for Emily uh, with Tim Punk we might do the same but in most cases again I still I truly am not sure like about the situation I guess after we will go through a brainstorming I will know more about where exactly I want to like represent CM Punk. Either I'm going to represent CM Punk backstage and in some type of meeting and maybe I will put some diagrams or posters behind him with no drinks and no whatever. Um, yeah, and they're going to be super sm smooched. We're barely going to see those. 
it's just going to be implied. Um, or we're going to create a simpan put, put, put Simpunk on ring and create the sense that he's just basically preached his message to others and now he stands and si soaks uh, the energy from people and that way we might again implement like add a couple of drinking figures, silhouettes, uh, and etc. So something like this. So for now since still since I don't know what type of situation Simpunk is exactly going to find himself in, I'm not going to be choose those as um, as a reference search. Um, I actually don't remember if I search something in here. No, again, the background's usually not the focus. The character is the focus, and the first reference search that we are going through is not a background focused. It's something that just helps us to figure out the character itself. The rest is not important. And later, once on study on the composition stage, after establishing what what exactly background is going to look like, approximately, we will go into the reference search, and then we will find exactly the proper references for this. So, if we will need to find the in the ring references and how people are, could like could appear behind his shoulders, um, and what type of distance they're going to be, and etc., it all depends. Uh, so all these reference searches are going to be done later because at this point they're just going to distract us. So in terms of the scenario, let's think straight edge. Yep, in terms of the scenario, we could actually y use a straight edge thing. So yep, we could use straight edge. Um, we could actually use something like don't drink, don't smoke, and do, don't do drugs elements. Um, join the society. Yeah, the rest is kind of unimportant. Uh, I mean, I mean, again, we need to represent, like, again, as a reminder, we are searching for keywords that is going to help us to find all proper visuals for this project to get inspired into putting this image from our mind into the paper. So because of this, or into the canvas, um, we need to choose something that is searchable. We definitely could search straight edge and find something based on the straight edge. Uh, if we're not going to find something based on the straight edge and it's not going to be enough, we could basically use don't drink, don't smoke, don't do drugs and we might something, find something but this. So again, you will choose probably searchable results. So your... Um, or if these results are not going to be searchable, you will f you will come up with synonymous... Ugh, I need to find the proper word. Synonymous... Synonyms. Synonyms, yeah. Synonyms. So you will basically come up with a cinnamon synonym syn Synonyms. With those. You will come up with Synonyms. With synonyms. Uh for those explanations. So for instance, if your description is not going to have a proper searchable descriptions and searchable words, keywords, you will find synonyms synonyms for them. Um, yeah, so this is it. So we actually have much more keywords for Simpunk than we have for Emily. For Emily we actually had like one, two, three, four, five, or only six, I believe. For Simpunk we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh snap, there's a lot of Actually, this is interesting. I thought that I'm not going to be able to search for for Simpunk anything, but again, because we created some type of a story, now we have information to work with. And before that, I didn't know what type of expression, like in what pose, I need to show Simpunk. But now, I'm pretty sure, or at least I have the information to control and understand what I need to do next. So again, information is power. So. Next thing, uh, again, in terms of the textures and colors, uh, it all depends. Right now, I don't believe that we are good. Again, uh, if we have information in here that could tell us what type of color we need to choose, of course we're going to choose it. But in most cases, I don't believe that 
anything in here is going to tell us any colors. So it definitely needs to be something dark as Straight Edge Society was presented with, but we might change this and we actually might choose something, not pink definitely, but something that could represent healthy lifestyle. So when it comes down to the textures, the only thing that I will believe help us to understand it it's probably a healthy lifestyle because textures and colors are definitely going to be based on a healthy lifestyle this is the only element of control so Let's just add this information in here. Healthy life style is going to be a indication for the textures. Which is pretty cool, I would say. Oh, snap. This needs to be in description. This one needs to be in description too. Um, okay, focuses. Um, we're almost done for today. Uh, the last thing that I'm going to do is this. Just came up with a couple of things and we're done. After we will establish the focuses, uh, the last thing that we're going to establish is the expression focus which right now is not necessarily important, we're not necessarily going to work on implementing expressions, but it's it's a good thing to already know uh, towards what type of expression our reaction will be headed to, uh, heading to. So, since this is like, okay, interaction, uh, interact to the viewer, no interaction, have to evoke sense of importance, so again, we will search something for the importance in this particular instance. So importance going to be important. <laughs> Importance, important. Uh, the inspiration is going to be important for us. Um, uh, oh snap! It's too much, too thick. Much thinner. Needs to be much thinner. Probably was it something about eight, double eight. Yep, that's better. I actually liked um, liked a lot how how I worked with sculpting, but again, if I will continue with the same kind of process of sculpting without having the idea behind the sculpting, I will it would be unsuccessful. Like you need to have an idea behind every study that you're doing and this is like the reason for me to implement this type of creating process not just to cr not just study CM Punk and not just study WWE superstars but actually create work with them and we're actually going to use sculpting uh, to analyze form better to come up with a good illustration in, in, in the end we actually will come up with a pretty decent illustration based on the sculpt so Mm, and the fact that we sculpted it actually added more into visual memory, into the muscle memory, and etc. So again, this is the way to study. And this is the, the exact formats that I'm going to show these streams in. We already have confident, but again, you could show confident in, uh, um, in expression too. So confident is something that you could show in expression. Role model. Again, it's going to be hard to like show the role model element, uh, but again, I will try to implement role model into the character. It's going to be a hard one, though. I mean, it's going to be a uh, like uh, we will assume the fact that he needs to be portrayed as a role model, so he needs to look a certain way. He needs to create his I don't know, turn his face in a in a proper direction. Uh, the proper tilt needs to be chosen for the head in order to portray this element of role, being a role model. He needs to again portray the confidence and combination of confidence with being a role model will give us much more stronger effect. 
um, yeah, focuses, um, and that's kind of it, I guess. So again, uh, yep, on this note, we're going to wrap up the session. Um, so again, to repeat myself, the next step is to go on a quick reference search for, based on those keywords that we established. Again, we're going to use only those keywords. <laughs> no, it's not the end. We didn't come up with the focuses. Yep, let's just figure it out with the focuses and go to the next thing. I'm actually not sure about focuses right now. Although establishing focuses could be a good idea, because depending on what's primary and what's secondary, we could we could we could spend more more time to search something that is primary than to spend time to search something that is tertiary on secondary. So I guess this is the exact time that we need to establish to put the primary focus. Okay, so okay, let's just do exactly that. So in terms of the focuses. Mm, I believe the element of godlike. This is the primary focus that I want to focus on, like th that I want to portray CM Punk in. I actually want to show him right here as a god. Uh, I mean, just for the storytelling wise. Um, I'm not that big of a fan of CM Punk anymore. I was, uh, but again, a lot of change since then. So, um, so yeah. Godlike, inspiring, it's kind of works too. It's pri it's primary focus too because again, as I said before, they're connected. They're indistinguishable from each other almost because you can't be a godlike if you're not inspiring. Um, so, um, confident, charismatic, confidence it's kind of probably a primary too. Yep, it's a primary two. So. Seriously? Didn't. Didn't. It's just one thing that makes it godlike. It's not one ingredient. What else? Uh, the charismatic and the fact that he is a leader, it's a secondary focus. So it will, if we will be able to show him as a charismatic person, it's cool. If not, it's not that big of a deal. And as a leader, it's a secondary too. Let's just duplicate this one. connect them together. So primary focus, uh, secondary focus, uh, wrestler and unhealthy lifestyle is going to be a tertiary focus of course. We don't have place there, so, so just both of them are going to be tertiary focus. And again, at the beginning of the session, I tried to discuss things about WWE, but again, it's much harder to do when you're just basically doing this on your own. I mean, I mean you, you have no audience, no one to listen to, and like, I already know these things, why would I talk about them with myself again? So, I will still try to do that, but again, once we will start to get some audience, it's, it's going to be much more interesting to discuss those things, and I'm going to, of course, spend more time on discussing those. Uh, from now on, I'm going to focus more on creative stuff because it's this is the the actual content for from for this. Um, uh, the first thing and the most important thing in the in these streams is the content, and not the WWE content itself. But again, uh, these streams are focused based on the WWE, so it's kind of focused on one niche WWE. But it's in most cases it's it's all about creative. So because again, it called it called creative sandbox in the end. You know, making WWE Superstars art. So the focus on art 
uh, on making art, not on WWE superstars, which again, sometimes they will take over uh, depending on what type of superstars we're talking about. Um, and discussing WWE topics is something that I definitely up to. I want to do that with people in the future. But right now, I want to, since we don't have any audience, I want to focus more on creating stuff, on working with stuff. And then once we will get some people, we'll start to talk about WWE a little bit more. Um, it doesn't change the fact that I'm going to, at the beginning of each session, try to talk about WWE, like the past weeks, uh, so, but I'm not going to do this in super extensive and super, super awesome way, I'm just going to briefly go over things that I will remember and that's it, just to, to have some context. So, okay, um, I guess that's it, um, oh no, this is not a tertiary focus. Tertiary focus is actually going to be straight edge and healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And these things are going to be the wrestler and then healthy lifestyle is going to be probably additional focus. They're not that important in this particular instance. Mbokch. So yeah, the straight age and healthy lifestyle, which is again kind of the same thing uh, in this particular instance, are going to be the main focus. Uh, those are going to be again the representation of the straight age, so I'm not going to put a tertiary focus. And these two are going to be an additional focus. And we need to make them smaller, super giant big. They don't have to be super giant big. So again, if we're going to... Uh, one of the reasons why the wrestler is additional focus because I'm not going to be able to show the actual gear of the CM Punk. I'm not going to be able to show his trunks, usually, uh, or whatever he's wearing. So I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to be able to show his knuckles with his uh, banged up things with the straight edge things because of this wrestler is going to become an additional focus because it's not going to be important at this point at this point and healthy lifestyle which is again something that we're going to use to search things on the background um, it's not going to be important either because again we have to create something that is going to present so the the first, the secondary, uh, the primary, secondary, and tertiary focuses. This is something that we're going to integrate inside of the character itself, and the additional focus is something that we're going to integrate in, in, in into the background that will help character uh, to bring character to life or to add to the character. Uh, <coughs> so that's it. I guess this is exactly this. It. Yep. So yeah, now we're done. Yeah, spend a little bit more time on this, forgot to add focuses. Um, I also ch uh, uh, represented by like how we're going to represent those things. So the sense of discomfort uh, using it primary focus, the sense of wonder usually using secondary focus, the sense of being nice and interested by tertiary focus. I guess we could do the same here. Um, so, in terms of the focuses, the confidence we're going to show through and this we're going to show by one. By the primary focus. Basically, this is the way that we'll be able to show the god godlike look. The same here the element of being a role model by one um, charismatic and leader it's going to show the importance and inspiration which is again connected the cool thing is that this is the second work that I'm doing this with this stage and it works here too this is a completely different project and it still works it might not work for every project the same way and we will adapt based on the changes 
but so far so good it kind of works so again and uh, there's not much that we could show tertiary focus with though so I guess the most important things in here is primary and secondary and there's not going to be any tertiary though because tertiary is straight age element and healthy lifestyle uh, oh no we actually could use a role model element with the tertiary focus mm -hmm. yep because again how can you be a role model to be like being uh, like using a healthy lifestyle or living a healthy lifestyle yep this is it so again confidence we're going to achieve through the godlike inspiration confidence the confidence itself um, the importance and inspiration in the viewer we're going to evoke through charisma and the element like uh, representing him as a leader uh, also the god ele godlike element will help us to do that too um, but again, focusing on those two elements. Um, and the, the being portrayed as a role model, we somehow will be able to integrate through a straight edge element or a healthy lifestyle. And all these things too, uh, somehow. So, yep, this is kind of it. I guess this is, sums up this part of the session and or this, 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 this stage. Um, again, let's just wrap up things. Um, again, the next thing we're going to do, again, let's just open... I don't know what, what I will be able to do throughout to tomorrow, I'm not sure. Uh, I will definitely go through the reference search outside of the streams and maybe, maybe I will draw a first sketch and tomorrow we will go through the brainstorming. But if I'm not going to be able to go through the first sketch for some reason, we will work on the first sketch tomorrow and I will deal on brainstorming outside of the streams. So I doubt that I will be able throughout tomorrow to actually finish the look for the final sketch and go through the whole brainstorm um, and go into the composition stage which might be the case but I doubt that because again we need to watch wrestling there's a lot of things to do just one day I doubt that so because of this I believe let's just do exactly that let's just search um, outside of the streams I will try to search references uh, based on those keywords that we established again I'm going to talk about only those keywords that are here here and here and of course create syn synonyms for them uh, if they're not going to become searchable or if I'm not going to find the things that I need I will gather all information that I need uh, and based on that I will based on references that I gathered and based on information that I established I will come up with the first sketch mm which is not going to have any background to it, it's just going to be a regular sketch with no background, I'm not going to focus on background itself, just the character. And then once we will go into the brainstorming stage, we're going to explore different expressions, different head positions, and try to increase the element of the primary focus to add to the psychology. And based on that, we will create a final reaction and create a final sketch that we will use to go into the next stage, uh, which is going to be a composition. Again, I will cover the whole process throughout this thing, and I plan on, after I will finish the project, create a compiled thing with explanation how I did things from the beginning to the start. Hopefully I will do that. I still don't know how exactly I'm going to show it, like either for free or not. I guess the first streams are definitely going to be for free because, uh, I mean, the first create, creating processes are going to be for free because they are not necessarily 100% clear and I'm still kind of discovering them for myself and they're raw. Um, I don't have experience yet and because of this, they're definitely going to be for free, I guess. Um, but. Sooner or later, I will start to put price on those because I need to survive somehow too. <laughs> we all need money, unfortunately, uh, to survive. So um, I guess the more experience I will get, the uh, more I will think about putting a price on it. Although I want to create all s things for free. And the reason why I'm streaming this is to actually give you this information in raw form for free. 
and everything that I'm going to do uh, besides that, like create the actual kind of courses or whatever, or tutorials, these things, depending on how much time I'm going to spend towards them or depending on how skilled I will become. And uh, I will potentially will start to put a price on, the, on them because again, this is unfortunately the, 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 the thing uh, that will allow me to survive. Mm. So that's it. So yeah, this is kind of it uh, for this part of the session. Again, I describe what we're going to do tomorrow. Hopefully, hopefully this is exactly what we're going to do. Also tomorrow I will cover again, as a repeat, to repeat myself, um, WWE things uh, that happened, uh, that will happen to today, that are already happening probably. Um, because, yeah, no, they will happen today, tomorrow. Yep, Wednesday. So they're probably right now somewhere closer to happening, I don't know. Uh, I will discuss those, uh, I will discuss NXT, I will discuss Mayhem Classic, I will discuss uh, 205 Live, uh, and we also will make uh, predictions uh, towards uh, Super Showdown, and we will kind of, again, we will do the same thing with predictions as we did in here. We basically will create a... Uh, the thing like here, put it into our Super Showdown, I probably will copy those things in here, why not? Let's just duplicate those things in here. Why it's not placing itself here? Oh. I will try to do that though. <laughs> Hopefully, I will manage. No, I'm not. I'm going to do that later. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I basically need to, to put all these things in here somehow. I'll do it later. So yeah, once we will do that, we will establish the, the same thing as we did for the Hell and Cell. Uh, like the who's going to potentially win uh, based on the on uh, the storylines we'll discuss storylines so yeah 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 I'm super tired this is the time to sleep so thank you for watching thank you for being here have a nice day or night and we're going to see you in the next session which is going to be tomorrow if nothing will change again um, reminders for those streams are uh, usually will be placed by me on Alex Connect's YouTube channel. So if you're going to see the scheduled streams out there, they're going to be there. Uh, if not, that means that I'm not sure if they're going to be there or not. If I'm going to uh, cancel one week streams or one certain stream, then I'm going to put in schedule only those streams that are going to be next. So again, um, so again, that's it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Have a nice day or night and see you in the next session. Eh, bye. Tony says, uh, body says bye too. Again, this is body. This is not Tony. <laughs>